to the JD McCarthy, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> JD MacArthur Arena. No. You know what I'm saying? The Bayshore, yeah. <laughs> the Bayshore Community Center. And then, then there's the, the, the... I was just reading the screen. <laughs> the Julie, very, very the Julie MacArthur. I guess there, there's a J in that one as well up at the rec center. I'm not so. going to look at the monitor no. anymore tonight. <laughs> All right. We are at the Hare Lumley Bayshore Community Center in Owen Sound. I'm Rob Leonard with your play-by-play -play announcer tonight. And with me, Billy Nickel. Billy, we've seen two very good games uh, so far tonight. Um, and now a really big one coming up here for the local local favorites. We have the Kilsyth Phantoms <coughs> up against the number one uh, Quebec Aces. Quebec undefeated so far at four and zero, oh, or are they five and zero? Oh? Uh, four and zero. Oh. Okay, we got the standings right here. This will answer the question for us. Uh, yeah, so uh, sitting in the number two spot right now, they're 4 0, undefeated, uh, up against uh, Kilsyth at 1 and 3. And uh, Ottawa, Palmerston tied for third and fourth spots. Looks kind of tough uh, for Kilsyth to move into one of those top four it, spots at going, this time. It's going to be really tough. Uh, Kilsyth basically has to win every game to really make their presence known for the. Uh, the final but uh, they know where they are and they've been here before so they they're going to do everything they can to, to win and they know they got the hometown crowd behind them absolutely so, so they're going to be going to be it's going to be a lot of pressure but they i think they're aware of that and they they want that yeah it's great having that home uh home advantage but uh, you know in, in watching this quebec team last night uh, when they defeated ottawa by a score of two to nothing and uh, um, you know, seeing their speed on the wings is just incredible. And uh, uh, not saying that, I mean, it, you know, this is a uh, national championship. Anybody could win at any time. Every team that's here is deserving to be here, that kind of thing. Yep. And as you said, Kilsyth, with that home crowd in behind them, they're playing at their home home rank. That could mean a lot to what they bring tonight. Yeah, they, they got something to prove. They, they are... They're they're regional champs. They beat uh, the Palmerston rookies in, in regionals, and they they know that they can do it. They just have to really find their stride and uh, be able to com compete. And they they need to just get things done. They're strong in the corner. They have the speed. They need to. They're an all-around team, but they they really need to start clicking now. Yeah, and you know, in the game uh, last night. Uh, when they lost 4-3 uh, to, to uh, sorry, when they lost 4-3 uh, uh, the double overtime. Double overtime, yeah. yeah. Uh, they didn't get a whole lot of scoring opportunities last night, but the ones that they did get, they capitalized on. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they, they had a power play, they, they, they made it count. They had a breakaway, they made it count. They had, you know, every opportunity that they had yep. they, they made it count yeah so any mistake that the and the phantoms are good for that any mistake that the other team can make they can pounce on it but at that being said i'm pretty sure the quebec aces will pounce on any mistake that the the phantoms will make if but they they got to limit it and uh communicate talk be strong and and i think they'll do well they they know what the aces are like and uh, i I have a feeling that it'll be a closer game than a lot of people think. That's right, and you know, it's really hard to say anything negative about uh, the way that the Aces have played. Their record speaks volumes for that, yeah. and uh, like you said, they don't make very many mistakes, but nope. if they do, you can count on uh, this Kelsey team to jump on them and make them pay for it. And you know, when you're undefeated at this point of the tournament, sometimes you get a little complacent. Uh, you'll sit back and just, well, you know what? You know, let's relax a little bit or yep. something like that. You don't take your opponent seriously, or you, or you just get too complacent. That can come back and bite you. And that's yep. not just in this sport; it's in any it's, sport. It's any sport. Yeah, they, they, they just, yeah, they forget about the last two games that they had, and and well, not necessarily forget about them, but realize that uh, they're a lot better than what they are. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. and it, they, you don't want to forget the bad games because then you you forget about the mistakes you had. So, just move forward with it but at the same time know what you're competing for that's right every every game is a new game that's for sure and uh, and as i said you know anything can happen tomorrow uh, the playoffs start yeah i'm sure the phantoms would like to be would love to be one of those teams playing tomorrow so 
or sorry, playing uh, on Saturday. Yeah. Going to be a big day tomorrow for uh, for Rogers. We've got uh, all of the playoff coverage uh, tomorrow. Yeah, uh, working overtime again. So. <laughs> <laughs> and all of it, you get to watch some uh, the best brimbo in the country. So, uh, and and it's it's awesome that we can uh, show the the rest of the country who doesn't know about it. Absolutely, yeah, it's a great experience for everybody, me included. <laughs> it's the first time I've uh, called it brimbo. <laughs> and uh, really loving it. I really enjoy it. So. It's 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 certain. Like a lot of people say, it's different. I mean, and uh, some of the people around here, like the old boys, when they say they brimball, it's it like brimball. That was a that's a crazy sport. And all you do is just run around hitting people. It's not, <laughs> no, it's when when you get here and when you get to the elite level, there is a lot of skill and a lot of talent, and it's. The, the taboo about people just going out having fun and then hitting people with it no they right here this is people take this more serious than a lot of things so absolutely you, you see the quality of play that we've seen here all this week here in old town and, and more to come over the next two days uh, definitely uh, is a sport that needs to be taken seriously mm -hmm. uh, i know i've enjoyed every minute of it so and i'm sure that and certainly hope everybody watching at home and and on the internet uh, I've enjoyed it as well. It's not over yet. We still got a couple of days to go. So uh, this game underway. The uh, number one ranked Quebec Aces against the hometown favorite Kilsyth Phantoms. And Aces cleared into the Phantom zone. Ball comes back into the aces zone looks like uh, Kilsyth is quite satisfied just to line up across the red line. Yeah, they 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 know uh, they don't want to take any chances because they're not called a trap, is yeah. it? By any <laughs> chance, the five-man trap. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they uh, they line four up on the line and have a D back so that they have pretty much a wall so that way if if they do flip it, the back D can pick it up. All right, and uh, Correct's able to break through that. Ball comes back toward center. Go back very, very adept at setting things up. Shot over the goal. It's on the mesh in the back of the net. Kilsyth picks it up. Now Quebec, the Aces setting up, making the change. Aces, that's number 99, Lefebvre. Here's a shot. Right on goal, good save. That was a shot by number 24. That was Pierre Luc Gil Gilbert. Now it's on the on the near corner here. Ball comes out front score. Wow. Predators oh. defender number 24. Uh, that was Chad Stevens. Thought that he had his man tied up, but got you see on got the replay. The loose. They're. Uh, Put that in with one hand, I believe. Yeah, they tried to, they tried to keep it to the outside, but the ball ended up squeezing out in front. Take another look at it here. Great move. Kyle, Kyle Potter doing what he can, playing the man. It just uh, got out. Got a stick on it. One handed that in, so the Aces grew up one to nothing. For uh, sorry, two minutes into this game. Aces now setting up in their own zone. That's number 88. That's William Lavoie. Lavoie hasn't taken off of him. Comes now to number seven. That's uh, Jean-Philippe Noel. Plays it back to his defensive partner. Ball comes off the boards. Nice job. Oh, he's taken in hard on the boards, but he bounces right back. Shot in front. Scores! What a play! Wow, these aces, I tell you. Yeah. What a play. Great stuck job. Past, stuck past the D after the D kept going. Took a really hard lick into the boards too, but he kept going. Seeing the other guy streaking and got the ball right to him. Okay. Just an incredible play. Yeah, good see heads up. Yeah. up. Right from this point here, as you can see, the ball comes bouncing off the boards. They knew exactly where they were going. Player gets taken in hard, bounces off the boards, has a man streaking all by himself right between the legs. That was number, uh, looked like it was number 16 on the aces. That would be Dominic Gagne. 
scoring the second goal for uh, for the Aces. Oh, oh, taken down hard. Ball now comes into the Phantom Zone. That's number four, LaRouche. Loses possession of the ball to Baumber. Baumber clears it around, trying to get it out. LaRouche keeps it in. Here comes a shot. Too many bodies in front of the goal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quebec's just running around right now. Here's number 50. That's uh, Anthony Mayer. Comes in behind the Phantoms goal. Here comes a shot. Oh, that didn't miss by much. And whoa, that's a dangerous hit. Bomber, Tyler Bomber in behind his own goal. Nice play up the boards. Plays it on. Now here comes number five. That's Rob Christie. Christie can't get anywhere with it. And there's a body check by number 44, Dane Steven. Aces come up with it again. Ball comes in over the line. It's number 58, Maxime Dugas. Plays it into the corner, patiently waiting. Dugas with it now. Plays it out to number 69. That's Eric Dufour. I'm sorry, that's uh, back into the corner. The, the Phantoms are being quite patient with them, too. <laughs> and shot comes in. Working hard in the corner. Great job there by number 44, Wayne Steven. Fighting his man off. And oh, he is hit hard. Wow, number 69. My goodness, that yeah. came very close to being a head jack. He, <laughs> Wayne, Oliver De Wayne was going, but... Uh, Went head first right into the boards, aiming for numbers. You see what the penalty is for this. Olivier de Soleil. See, he was heading off on a change, but. Uh, it's a good fight by Wayne in the corner. He was running right for him here, and did he catch? Well, drove him right into the boards. Mm -hmm. That's a five minute major. Five minute major for boarding. Mm -hmm. Have the official scoring on the first goal. The first goal for uh, the Aces uh, is number 58, Maxime. Okay, we're going to take another look at the uh, other angle of this hit on Steven. As he comes in and yeah, just catches him on the shoulder and drives him right into the board. Yeah, I mean, he's a dangerous play. He, he was in a vulnerable position, but uh, Quebec. I, I, I want to say they, they should have known that. They, the guy took uh, quite a few steps just to get to him. So Wayne's a tough guy. He'll shake it off and uh, give a, good, a few neck stretches. And I, I can imagine he, he'll come out. He plays with a lot of heart, Wayne does, so he'll be back. Well, I'm sure the same rule in broom balls that is in hockey. Yep. Coaches, everybody tells you you can see the numbers. Yep. You stop. the boards, you yep. stop. You don't go hitting somebody. So. But uh, it never it never ends well for either party. No, so. But uh, they got this five minutes, and uh, they early on in the period, and they're already down to nothing. They they should use it. They might as well get a few bit back. So. And here comes the Phantoms, setting up now, coming in over the blue line. Got some motion going on here. Played down low. Comes back out to the top. Back down low again, out to number 17. Taylor McConnell. McConnell tries one. Ball goes wide, digging in for it in behind the goal. Phantoms come up with it. On to number 66, Mike Bloomfield. Bloomfield, back to Rob Christie. Christie's gonna try one from there. Oh, Rebound out front. Oh, great opportunity there by the Phantoms. Nice setup, Rob Christie. Taking that shot from the from far out and uh, having a man all by himself on the on the far post there. Yeah, snuck through everybody, snuck through the arms of everybody. See, Christie takes the shot here. Ball bounces over and then wow. Scott Robinson in front just can't get another rebound. So. 
Face off now in the Aces zone. Aces try to come up with it and they're able to clear the zone. Four, only one minute gone in the five minute major for boarding. So the Phantoms have plenty of time here, but uh, more goals they can score on this power play, the better. Shot goes way high and over the goal. That draw is going to come all the way back now. It's a good setup. They're, uh, they're, the Phantoms are trying the backdoor play to have someone sit and kind of uh, nonchalant in the side of the net, shoot it wide on purpose, or shoot it behind the net, get a bounce right back out. Hopefully, they can uh, get it on their stick. Easier said than done. <laughs> Absolutely. Phantom setting it up now, trying to get first get it over the line and into the Aces zone. Getting that pressure on. Great job in there by number 12, Kyle Potter. Potter doing a super job in there, keeping possession of that ball for the Phantoms. Ball comes back now to Mackenzie Pringle. Pringle, there's a shot, goes wide. It's that backdoor play they're trying. Potter trying to, as you said, the backdoor play there it didn't quite work the way they wanted it to. Man wrong here, right behind you. And it comes over now to number eight, Union 8, Mackenzie Pringle. Pringle puts it on to Squibb. Squibb on to number 18, Justin Stevens. Stevens is knocked down. Ball comes out now to number five. It's Rob Christie. Christie plays it in to number 20. Scott Robinson back to Christie. Christie on to number 17. That's Taylor McConnell. Back out to Christie. Christie. On to Bloomfield, back to Christie, back to Bloomfield. Bloomfield now moving into the center. Is he going to try one? Yes, he is. Ball comes in. It's loose. In behind the Aces goal. Comes back out to Bloomfield. Bloomfield tries another one. Can't get it through. And out come the Aces. And the ball's cleared back. Up and here's a two on one. Two on one for. Oh, oh what a great so... opportunity. Yeah, wow. good control by uh, Austin Brown to hand that ball and get it on a stick. Nice job to Scotty to get it up. Austin Brown now plays it back out to Broomfield. Broomfield plays it now over to Rob Christie. Christie with a shot goes wide, comes back around now to number 17, Taylor McConnell. McConnell takes a look over to Bloomfield. Bloomfield ball bouncing around and cleared away. Now here come the Aces. 134 remaining in the power play. Oh my goodness, offside. Yeah, Rob Christie just slid right over. Good job for uh, Quebec right in there. Uh, there uh, in front of the net, just clearing everything, not giving any rebounds out, tying up their man. Take a look at the opportunity here for the Phantoms. You got number 20, that's uh, Scott Robinson coming down there. Flips the ball over, and wow, that close to making it a 2 1 game. Yeah, good uh, good smarts by Austin Brown to know they're not put a stick up. A lot, of people, a lot of people just more reaction just to get their stick up. Absolutely. Number 39 now, that's Steve Squibb. Squibb coming in over the line, plays it now to Mac Pring Pringle. Pringle back over to Squibb. Here's a shot in front, batted away. Trying to come around the goal. Played now to number 19, that's uh, Jeremy King. King in behind the goal. Tries one out front, just missed. Under a minute remaining in this five minute power play. Kept in by Pringle. Pringle over to Squibb. Squibb back to Pringle. Mackenzie Pringle can't get it through, but he is able to cause enough interference to keep that ball in. Squibb hangs onto it over to Pringle. Pringle now into the corner shot. Oh, that didn't miss by much. Number 19, that's uh, Jeremy King. King back to Squibb. Back over to Stevens. Here's a shot. Didn't get through. And kept in. Great job in there by Pringle. Steven shot. Oh, my goodness. 
Phantoms trying everything they can to get one, get back into this game. Wow, big check there by uh, number, I believe that was number 18, Justin Stevens. Justin Stevens plays with a lot of heart. He goes out every shift. Now here's Rob Christie into the zone. Shot. Play the two players get tangled up in front of the goal. Ball comes back out in front. Aces now in control of it. Eight minutes remaining in the first period. Quebec Aces, undefeated Quebec Aces leading by a score of two to nothing over host Kilsyth Predators. Phantom. Oh, sorry, Phantom. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know there's so many names now. <laughs> Phantoms. Got it. Ball goes into the Aces zone. If you're doing, oh, sorry, um, Kelsey doing a really good job uh, even after that five minute power play of yeah, keeping, keeping they, the Aces uh, contained. They've uh, changed up their uh, play now. They're not doing the four on the line anymore and waiting for them to come over. Ball now in the Kilsyth zone. Ball's played out. Bloomfield. It's one thing you'll notice about the Aces, they use their goalie for a lot. He's a third defenseman, basically. Sometimes they'll even take it behind his own net. Yeah, I noticed that in last night's game and uh, the Ottawa keeper as well. Both I noticed that both were quite active, mm -hmm. uh, active in there for for those teams. So now the Aces trying to come out of their own zone. Stopped by Bloomfield. Bloomfield tries one. There was somebody stick knock right out of their hands. Uh, no defenders there. There's a great save right there. Good job by number 42. Robin Mole in goal for Kelsey. He's got a stick laying there at center. Not sure what's going on here now. We've got a uh, penalty coming. Yeah, uh, Scott Rob stick rode off his shoulder and hit him in the head. Well, he tries to tip it home. Mole comes out of his goal. There's a high sticking penalty gun. Scott, uh, like number Scott, one. Scott doesn't like getting penalties. He's, and he'll tell the ref that he doesn't like to, but yeah, I, I don't think he's getting away with it. Scott Robinson taking a two minute high sticking penalty. Got number 19 there, uh, Jeremy King was not very happy about his stick being knocked out of his hands either. Draw is going to come now uh, to the left of Kilsyth goalkeeper Robin Mole. He's uh, Scott. He's being the. He doesn't want to shut the door. He thinks it's the ref's job. That's. Uh, not going to win. Well, that no, battle. someone, uh, you know what? And someone should tell Scott Robb he's not in Katie anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, when it comes down to arguments with referees and think no, pretty, it's, it's pretty not. much just. It's frustrating and I've been there, but you, you got to learn to. To keep their composure. You're not going to win that battle as a player. That's for sure. Oh, we got another delay. Got another penalty coming up. Wow. Exactly not what uh, what Kilsyth wanted at this point. Here comes a shot. This Aces team is powerful enough as it is playing them five on yeah. five, but now uh, Kilsyth is going to go five on uh, three. Five on three, and you're going to uh, you're going to see um, you're going to see Kilsyth play a really tight triangle with three guys on there. Usually they'll have uh, a one guy up high or two guys up high with uh, who are going to block shots. But Taylor McConnell going off two minutes for cross checking. It's a lot of open space. Five oh eight remaining in the first period. 
Quebec Aces, undefeated Quebec Aces leading the Kill Scythe Phantoms by a score of two to nothing. The Kill Scythe really needing a penalty kill here if they're going to have any chance of staying in this one. Ball comes back now to number 69. That's uh, Desile. Ball out front. Well, put it around. Ball is cleared right over the goal. That was number 44, Sebastian Goudreau. Yeah, Ball ends quick, up. Quick in. passes from uh, Quebec there, back and forth, back and forth. They want uh, the Phantoms to keep following, following, and eventually not expect uh, where the shot's going to be coming from. Take a look at the uh, Kilsyth bench. They look, they look deprived. <laughs> they, they're just watching. So they, they gotta, they gotta get something to boost their confidence right now. And getting penalties is not one of it. Absolutely not. So the referee's not going to allow this line change by the Aces. Kilsyth wins the draw. Ball bomber in behind his own goal. Loses possession of it. Comes back out now to number 44. Sebastian Goudreau. Here's a shot. That missed by a mile. That was by number 96, LaRouche. Referee blows it down. A lot of these, a lot of these missed shots going behind the net are almost just as dangerous. Get that bounce off those boards and it comes right back to the person on the, the back door. 33 seconds remaining in the five on three, and Kilsaith will get a player back. And here comes the shot. Wow, that was a rocket. I think Mole got a piece of that. Back out front, here's another shot. Bounces off a ton of legs. Covered up, whoa, there's a jab in the knee of Rob Christie, wow. Chris is just going to walk away on that well, one, boy. It, it, it almost, <laughs> the white was covering it, and I think uh, the Aces thought it was one of the blues, so when he jabbed at the ball, he didn't realize it was actually jabbing at his home player. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, that it's going to be called outside, which is a good call because it was the, the white body that was on it and preventing the ball from playing. 4-14 remaining in the first period. Aces leading by a score of 2-0, 2 to nothing over the Kill Scythe Phantoms. I'm sure the Phantoms would love to get one before yeah, the end some, of this Yeah, something period. to get them going again. I mean, they just, a good, a good kill with these two, it, it might happen, but uh, they gotta start uh, playing like they should. Squibb knocks it deep into the Aces zone. Aces coming out of their own zone now. Still with a five on three. That's about to end as one of the penalized players is coming out of the box. It's now a five on four for the next 45 seconds. Yep. Good job by Kilsaith in uh, killing off that first penalty. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the first penalty. <laughs> it's, a, it's a start. I mean, now they got a little more traffic on the A. The ice, but uh, it's getting like, and especially number 20, Scott Robinson, getting that penalty, which is one of the better block shot or, or uh, shot blocks in one of the, in the league. But uh, you can't afford to be having penalties like that. Wow, there's a big check into the boards. Bloomfield got away with that one. There's a shot, well high over the net. Aces with the pressure on here. That's number 69. Desile balls in front. It's loose. Bloomfield is grabbed, but referee's going to let it go. The ball's going to go all the way down the ice, and it's going to be icing. 3:14 remaining now in the first period. Six seconds remaining in the penalty to number 17, Taylor McConnell of the Phantoms, and uh, be kind of nice to get them back. Uh, yeah, I mean, and Robin's playing five on five again. Robin's uh, doing what he can to save the ball. It's, it's again, the slow start really, uh, like they, they had a plan on the, the four on the line, but it obviously didn't work, but uh, it was almost where it was too slow anyways for them to make an effort. But uh, get this penalty killed, come back. Ball now is cleared out, out of the penalty box. Here's a play coming in. Shot, oh, goes over the goal. Wow, great opportunity by Taylor McConnell coming into the penalty box. 
And now here's number 12. That's Kyle, Kyle Potter shot. Potter, oh, you got a stick or his broom on it, but unable to put it in the goal. Here's a check taken in hard. Potter's in, or sorry, Chad Stevens causing all kinds of havoc in there. Here's a foot race for it now down the ice. Good job there by number 10. That's Austin Brown of the Phantoms. 2.20 remaining here in the first period. Two nothing aces. Phantoms would love to get one back here before the end of this period. Be a lot easier going into the second period with a one goal disadvantage than a two, that's for sure. Now here comes number 96. LaRouche plays it over to the far side. Referee blows the whistle. Holding the stick penalty. Hopefully the aces. The coming aces up going. to the aces, yep. Behind the play. This uh, should finish out the, the period, so they, they should be using this to get that one goal that they need to go into the second, because it's <laughs> they need any momentum to go in into the second would be great. But uh, we've seen what the aces can do on their uh, penalty kill, and they any traffic or any ball that gets loose out in front, they clear away or they tie up their man where they can't get anything on it. So that was assistant captain Eric before that took that penalty for holding the stick. Is not a great penalty to take when no. you're in the attacking no. zone. No, uh, wasn't much going on until we heard the whistle blow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't expect that a holding the stick penalty in the offensive zone. Now. Phantoms on another power play here. The ball comes over to Bloomfield. Bloomfield plays it back to Rob Christie. Christie over shot. Bloomfield in trying to get that one. Trying to keep it in. Good job there. Takes his man out of the play. Bloomfield picks it up. Bloomfield works around the goal. Mike Bloomfield looking for somebody to play it to. Comes back now to Rob Christie. Over to Bloomfield. Back to Christie. Christie's gonna try one, no, a pass. Tried the back door. Back to Rob Christie again. Christie, oh, tries to get it to Bloomfield to one-time it. Here's Bloomfield back to Christie. Christie into Bloomfield. Bloomfield back to Christie. Christie on to McConnell. Back out to McConnell again. 45 seconds remaining in the period. Here's Rob Christie, back out to Bloomfield. Bloomfield plays it over, here comes a shot. Oh, bounces off the defender and goes wide. About 30 seconds remaining here. Here's Christie, steals it away. Christie looking in front. Rob Christie now, still in a battle for that one. He gets taken out hard, and the ball's gonna go all the way down. The ice, is it gonna be enough for icing? And no, it's not. 10 seconds remaining, 10 seconds remaining in the penalty. That's gonna about do it for the first period. One last opportunity there, and there's a buzzer. So at the end of one period of play, the Quebec Aces, undefeated Quebec Aces, lead the Kelsyth Phantom by a score of two to nothing on goals by number 58, Maxime Dugas, and uh, by number 16, Dominique Gagné, uh, to give them the 2-0 lead. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I thought it was a period. Uh, it didn't really surprise me, let's put it that way. I, I, no. I thought maybe that's the kind of period it was going to be. Yeah, it, it's it, the, the Phantoms knew who they were playing against at the start with the four on the line. They wanted to play... Uh, like a trap so that they can't get past the line and then they could probably set things up when they get there but they obviously it wasn't starting to work with the 2 nothing quick goals but uh, the pen, their uh, power play and their uh, the way they've been moving the power play has been pretty good but the, the aces have just been killing it clearing the traffic out front we need to thank Harvey Swiss Chalet, 1598 8th, 18th Avenue, East Owen Sound, for the fantastic meals that they've served the Rogers crew all week long. 
here uh, at the Broom Ball Championships. We thank them very much, had uh, great sandwiches today and uh, look forward to the meals tomorrow and on Saturday as well. Um, I go to Harvey's Swiss Chalet all the time. <laughs> I, all did, right, so. I did go to Harvey's. You did, but yeah. yours is looking awfully cold it's right cold now. It's cold now. So. I was in a hurry when I came from the rec center because uh, just, it, it, I was eating Jed's, but uh, that was early in the day, and when you're running around, I should have a, a Fitbit on because I'd be winning any challenges right now. But so. the great thing is is that you took care of our sponsor and you, yeah, you, yeah, you, I you said, bought your food from I them. said, I'm getting Harvey's. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the second period is underway. It's in the Aces zone. Aces trying to work their way out. Taking their time. Phantoms def desperately want to get a goal here. Get back into the hole and the ball comes loose. Now it's picked up by number 88, Mackenzie Pringle. Pringle over to Squibb. And the referee blows the whistle on that one. Looks like that, was, that was a dumb penalty. Oh, now here we go. Got some people throwing punches down here. Wow. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but a oh boy, oh boy. I don't know. It was number 44. That's Wayne Steven. It was it, it was a dead play, and then he gives him a shot like that. I, I, he might be a little upset still going into the boards from before, and I really don't blame him for being upset, but it's, that's, oh, it's a bad penalty to be taken. We'll take a look at what happened here on the replay. See Steven uh, with the ball. And uh, we took exception. Well, it wasn't much of a check there. You wouldn't no, I, I think yeah, it's up against the boards. But then he comes back, gives him a shove. So the play was dead. I don't know. You never know. It might have been the same player that he uh, that nailed him maybe, into the boards, uh, boards earlier, too. Uh, <laughs> It just seems kind of odd that he would react that way to what seemed like a, a harmless uh, harmless hit along the boards, unless it was the same player. Mm -hmm. That was Anthony Mayer in that situation, number 50. Uh, Dave Charter talking to the players there. Charter's a local ref. I think he, he's he's one of the local refs for the, this area that does the nationals. He, def he will know what's going on. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great guy on and off the ice. So. Taking his time, giving the explanation to the players, but uh, yeah. can't see. Oh, there's a five minute major up there against uh, number 44, Wayne Steven. I would imagine that would be a fighting major. It's a. Uh, Tyler Bomber in the A on the, the Phantoms there. His, uh, his dad is uh, on the uh, committee. He's actually just to my left here. He's playing with his phone. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Bomber family has uh, three kids that all play broom ball and all have come through the system through the juniors and all the way up. So I actually know Tyler. Uh, he's a very good plumber, by the way. Very good plumber, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get to see him when he... Uh, when he visits the restaurant we work in. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, I've heard good things. <laughs> What's that? I've heard good things. Yeah. So. <laughs> Harry looks a bit frustrated too with uh, what's going on. No, he won't be happy with that at all. No. And he understands completely as uh, referee's explaining it to him. It's gonna be a five minute major, 1723 remaining here in the second or sorry, second period. Yep. And uh, now he's calling over the other official here to, to try and get a try and get an explanation. So uh, Doug McGregor, he's uh, the next uh, Gilside Flyer. Like when they were the seniors back in the day. He's uh, he's been around the sport long enough, and is. Uh, his son Doug's on the team, or his, his son Corey is on the team defense. Another player that came through the junior system, so it's uh, certainly working in this area. Didn't look like uh, Phantom's coach was uh, overly impressed with the explanation. <laughs> no, <he> got, so. <laughs> no. 
I, I would imagine there was more to the story than because yeah, it, it didn't <laughs> seem all that that uh, that difficult or that hard. So <coughs> playback underway. Five minute major assessed to number 44 Wayne Steven. And uh, another five minutes major for the fan. So uh, yeah, for the Phantoms to kill off here. So uh, anyway, here come the Aces back into the Phantom zone. Comes over to number 44, the Sebastian Goudreau. Back out to Goudreau in the middle. Goudreau plays it back into number 89, Dufour. Dufour gets it back again. Dufour moves in, back to Goudreau, back to Dufour, shot. Misses high and wide. Back out to 44, that's Goudreau. Goudreau with another shot, high and wide. Back out front, Goudreau in the middle again. Another shot. Bodies all over the place, in the way there, stopping everything you're throwing at him. Here comes another shot, unable to get it through. Bomber gets him. Gets himself in the way of that one. There's 44, Goudreau again. Comes back out to the middle. Gonna try another one, shot goes wide. Absolutely no space in there. No, no, they're, they're shutting everything down. Doing a great job in there. Just uh, over three minutes remaining in the major. Back out to Goudreau. Puts it back out. Into the middle again, fire too many bodies around, shot blocked again, Bomber doing a great job in there, stopping shot after shot. Ball's coming down and everybody making wholesale changes here. Number 44, Sebastian Goodrow. Moves into the zone, here comes a shot, high and wide. Into number 99, Lefebvre. Lefebvre back out to Goudreau. Goudreau blocked in front by Rob Christie. Back out to Goudreau. Here comes another shot. That misses. In behind the net, number 42, Lavoie. Back out to Goudreau. Here comes a shot. Blocked again in front. Great job in there by the Phantoms. Here, setting up again. Comes back out to Lefebvre. Back to Goudreau. Back to Goudreau again. Shot, oh, he fans on it. That was number 96, LaRouche. Ball comes back out. Two minutes remaining now in the five minute major. Comes back out in front again to Goudreau. Shot goes high over the goal. There's 96, LaRouche. Back into Goudreau. Here's another shot again, missing high over the net. Phantom's got everything down low covered, so they're trying to fire high, and he just either misses the net or goes right into their chest. Ryan again. Tries a wrist shot in there. <laughs> All in behind the net, 125 remaining in the five minute major. Phantom's doing a fan. Oh, look at the kicking in there, my goodness. Kicking the back of the uh, back of the legs. I think it was number 42. There was uh, Lavoie kicking the back back of the legs of the Phantom. Yeah, the it's 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 and kicking and uh, just like hockey, it's it's dangerous and it's a match penalty. So I don't know. Maybe they're letting them slide. So he definitely wasn't going after the ball. No, <laughs> no, and that's yeah, and he's. It's, well, that, that's the kind of frustration. Yeah, you know, it's, that, it's, that, it's getting frustrating work. from both sides right now because Aces can't score and that the Phantoms are still on a penalty kill. So Aces are still uh, trying hard to get something here. Unable to do so. Phantoms doing a great job on this penalty kill. One minute remaining in the five minute major. Here it comes back across again. That's number 50. That's. Anthony Mayer, ball goes in behind the goal. Comes back out. Out front, over to Mayer. Shot, that missed. Back out to Anthony Mayer. Mayer tries it, no room. That ball's gonna be just chipped out. 
and down the ice. 35 seconds remaining in the five minute major to Wayne Steven. Phantoms may be able to use this to their uh, to their advantage here if they're able to kill this off again. Now in comes number 33. That's Pierre Tremblay. Comes back out to number uh, to Anthony Mayer. Back out to Anthony Mayer again. Shot blocked again. Anthony Mayer. Two seconds left in the penalty. Great job by the Phantom. Oh my goodness. Missed. Oh, he just got hacked. Wow. Referee's gonna not call that one, but yeah, wow. Uh, that was a big whack. He doesn't that, have that a, looked like it hurt a lot too, so. Might have a broken bone out of that one. Yeah. Wow. A lot of discussion going on at the bench yeah, over there, there right now <laughs> between the benches, so. Uh, Let's hope cooler heads prevail, but uh, that didn't look like uh, that's going to be a very nice injury. No, no, that that's got uh, <laughs> that's got bruises written all over it. But the penalty is over, and it came away unscathed. But uh, they're still <laughs> still got a lot to go. Christie hit from behind. There's going to be a penalty. Referee with his arm up. Now the Phantoms are going to go on the power play. I'm going to take a look at that slash, though. Ball came uh, loose on the other, and he tried to take it back, and Ellie. Corey Corey got a little uh, wow. excited with the stick there. It's it's surprising it wasn't called. It, it, <laughs> it's, I don't know. Yeah, they it, it, it probably should have called it, but uh, I guess they didn't. Not sure where the player went at this point, whether he's you know, sitting down at the end of the bench there right now. Yeah, he had to. Not very happy at this point, so. From the draw, the ball is going to be cleared out. 11.20 remaining in the second period. Lots of time left. Aces leading by a score of 2 nothing. Now here comes the Phantoms. Phantoms on the attack, moving into the zone, setting it up. Ball comes back now to number 39. That's Squibb. Squibb over to Ball's in front, loose. And it's going to be cleared out. Squibb needs to hurry. One twenty-five remaining in the power play. Phantoms, they want to get back into this one. They desperately need a goal here. It's over to number 88, Mackenzie Pringle. Pringle puts it over to Squibb. Squibb back out to Pringle. Pringle to Squibb. Squibb tries one. Hits the off the foot. Squibb able to keep it in. Over to Pringle. Stevens in front of the net causing all sorts of mess. But Justin back out does. to Pringle. <laughs> Squibb going off on a change. Goes to Stevens in behind the goal. Kyle Potter. Ball comes out front. It's still loose. Wow, boy, big pile up. Now here we go. Oh, there's a punch in the face. Wow, number four. That was Corey McGregor. Took a shot in the face from... Uh, can't see the number on this player right now, but this uh, this player right here punched Corey McGregor right in the face. 42. Number 42. That was uh, Jose Lavoie. Punched him in the face, boy. Lavoie is going to be going to the penalty box for sure. This is getting pretty As rough right now. Wearing a full cage. Two players in the box right now. Looks like that, that'll be the only penalties at the air. It looks like uh, number four, Corey McGregor for Kelsey. Well, they got two guys in the Jose in the auto bench. Yeah. yeah, they had number 50 in there to begin with. Uh, yeah, to be there. Oh, 
She's getting getting dangerous out there now. Lots of people want the win, want want the ball, so I don't mind that. But uh, just try and keep the the crazy stuff on track for a little bit. That's right, exactly. Wait for the referees to get this sorted out. Still lots of concern down there for the uh, injured player from the Aces uh, who took that slide. I believe it was uh, Maxime Dugas. Tough time for any injury. Yeah, to happen, any injury really. now, yeah. Definitely with the playoffs coming up and uh, yeah. starting tomorrow, you don't need any major injuries, but uh, a lot of players are very tough and play with broken, <laughs> lots of broken stuff uh, in games that really matter. So yep. here we go, Rob Christie now. Sets it up, scores! There's what they needed. Number 88, Mackenzie Pringle has scored. Just a rocket shot right on the ice. To bring the Killside Phantoms to within one goal. That's what they need right now. They need something to get them going. And Mackenzie just brought something that hopefully can light a, a spark under their butt. <laughs> Take a look on the replay now. and uh, Mackenzie gets off the bench after Tyler Bomber changes. Just a perfectly placed shot. Beats, yep. a, beats a goalkeeper on the short side. Yep. So. so now it's 2-1 with just under 10 minutes remaining in the second period. Kilsyth with a life here now. Two early goals in the first period by the Quebec Aces. Uh, kind of looked like that was going to be the, the theme of this game. Yeah. But... Uh, Certainly hasn't. The ball comes in over the line. Cleared back out. Comes to number 96, LaRouche. Balls into the corner, tries to get it out front. Right back into the goalkeeper. That was number 77, uh, Cody Bomber. Put the ball right trying to send it goalkeeper. around. Rob Moore was on top of it. Well, that was just what the doctor ordered. Yes, uh, yes. The fans well, definitely it, need that goal. And, and it got the crowd back into it, too. So it's ride this momentum to get to, to make some more chances. Now the face off in the Phantom zone. Phantoms now with control of the ball and behind their own goal. So it's number 19, Jeremy King, back there. Plays it out, the ball's going to go out of play right into the timekeeper's box. The timekeeper gets a souvenir, and now I guess she has to give it back. <laughs> That's a, it's an underfunded sport. <laughs> <laughs> Draw is going to be to the right of goalkeeper Robin Mole in the Phantom's net. Ball comes back. It's number 44, Sebastian Goudreau. Goudreau with control of it now. 8.45 remaining in the second period. Comes back to number 69. That's for number 69, uh, Oliver De Soleil. De Soleil taking a look around. Great coverage in there by, uh, by Kelsite. They're not giving them one inch of real estate in there well, at all. The, uh, the aces are trying to pick move, the, uh, keeping their body still while they're moving the play over. Aces in the middle of a change. Now the penalized players are back out of the box. Here's number 88, William Lavoie. Clears it in, good job in there by number four. That's Corey McGregor doing a good job getting his man off the ball. Bomber now, clears it out. Oh, heading. There's number 12, that's uh, Kyle Potter. 
Potter's got the ball moving into the Aces zone. Plays a nice ball over to the far side. Aces are going to take control of that one. And number 77, Cody Bomber did his job of yeah. getting in the way. Mind you, he took the worst of that hit. It looks, it looks like it's overpowering, but uh, <laughs> the Aces guy didn't come away with the ball, so. <laughs> Shot hits the side of the net. Seven minutes remaining in the second period. Aces hold on to a slim 2-1 lead over the Kilsyth Phantom. Ball is flipped over. Comes down the floor. Squibb cannot catch his man. Gets a, gets a stick on it. Or gets a broom on it, knocks it away. Yep. Good hit to get him away from going towards the net. What a decent crowd in here tonight. Mm -hmm. Lots of locals, but there's also lots of fans for broom ball around. Just uh, coming to watch. From the draw. Bomber in behind his own goal. Taken by the Aces. Aces keep control of it down in the Phantom Zone. Good job blocking that in there. There's a shot, goes high and wide. Again, the you know Phantom's doing a great job. Since those first two goals were scored by the Aces, uh, um, it's impressed me that the Phantoms, the job they've done on keeping uh, the Aces out wide yeah. and, and keeping them away from the goal, but also plugging up the middle and leaving absolutely no room. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they plug up the middle and block the shots. It's, it's, it's what they're known for. I mean, it drives other uh, teams mad because they can't get anything going, but why, why stop something that's uh, working so good right now? Absolutely. Ball comes into the Aces zone. Quebec Aces undefeated in this tournament at 4-0. Leading 2-1 with six minutes to go. Phantoms making it very difficult for them to get the ball out of their own zone, and they can't. Here it comes. Bloomfield with a shot, hits off the defender. Phantoms are giving, uh, giving the Aces fits right now their own zone, just yep. keeping them hemmed in. And Waiting for a mistake. Retreats behind his own goal. Trying to find a lane, trying to find a spot, anything to get it into their own zone, but also kill some time off the clock. I yeah, guess, yeah, I mean, the clock is in their favor right now. Yeah. So the ball is played high. Batted out of the air. Oh, stick is knocked out of his hand. No call. Referee's letting it go. Yeah, they are. Ball's cleared back into the zone. Now here comes Quebec. Oh, what a beautiful play in. Oh, what a save by Robin Mole. Wow, Robin Mole, what a great save. Great, came right out and challenged. Took away everything. Tyler Bomber tries a shot. Ball goes in behind the goal. Great job in there. Number 88, Mackenzie Pringle. What a hit he lays and another one. Separating his man from the ball, that's for sure. Pringle has had one heck of a second period here. The eight is uh, Mackenzie Shirley showing up. He's been a, he's, he's actually kind of still a junior, so <laughs> he's, he's doing pretty good, so. Definitely, he's been a factor in this second, uh, yep. second period for sure. Oh, yes. Phantoms now working the ball around in their own zone. Four minutes remaining in the second period. Aces holding on to a slim 2-1 lead. Quebec undefeated so far at 4-0. Oh, the goalie, that's the goalie left it. To his... Oh, they got an open net. Oh, they can't get it in. There comes in front, shot. Oh my goodness. Wow. There was a golden opportunity. Yes. Shot and misses the goal. 
the goalie comes out and plays it, but he, all through tournament, he, he's been shaky with the, his ball control, but they still uh, take it back to him all the time. Now Quebec just uh, three minutes remaining now. Take a look at the replay. Ball comes in and just Mole just gets Stacks his feet the pads in there. and gets it out. Yeah. <coughs> now the Phantoms uh, trying desperately here with just under three minutes remaining in the second period, trailing by a score of two to one. Bloomfield tries one. Bloomfield is over there battling for it, keeps it in momentarily, but the ball is going to be sent all the way back down into the kill site zone. Ball, nice play on the boards there by Justin Steven. Working hard in there. Ball comes around. Bomber is gone that. Bomber working it around. He's going to keep pushing and bullying his way through there. <laughs> Double team. There they come up with the ball now. Out front. Oh, he just missed it. What an opportunity. Wow, he didn't miss that by much. My goodness. Phantoms have had their opportunities here in this period. Shot. Oh, goes over the goal. Rebound. Squibb picks it up now on the boards. Squibb, I don't think you're going to take him down too easily. No, he's, like he's pretty, pretty solid. solid guy. Aces come up with it now. 130 remaining in the second period. Phantoms need a goal. Phantoms really want possession in their end so that they can get Robin out for the extra. Ball is flipped up and down. Here comes Robin. He's out. Extra attacker on. The net is empty. Ball comes in front. Shot. Oh, my goodness. If the defender wasn't there, that was in. Big action here now. Net empty for the Phantoms. Ball is cleared into the corner. They take possession of it. Great job by the Phantoms here. Ball comes back to Bloomfield. Bloomfield, he's going to play it over to his partner, uh, Corey McGregor. McGregor into Pringle. Shot. Oh, just missed on the short side. 35 seconds to go. Ball comes off the boards, kept in again. And here's number four. That's Corey McGregor. McGregor plays it in. 20 seconds to go. Merrifield. So Bloomfield, back to McGregor. McGregor, they need a shot. Oh, good save. Shot comes back to Rob Christie. Christie, six seconds left. Four. Shot comes in front. Can't get it. Go! Wow, what a game. What a game indeed. That was probably <laughs> one of the best games of the tournament. That right was there. intense. It was uh, by far the best games the fans have played. Wow. Phantoms. Wow, what a game they played. Those two early goals yeah, yeah, by they, the Aces yeah. uh, were their undoing. But after those two goals, they were definitely the best. They were the best team on the night in this game. Yeah, so. yeah no, it's... Uh, <laughs> That's, that's a tough way to go. I mean, uh, they kept it to them the whole game. I mean, Quebec's good. <laughs> but uh, the Phantoms really wanted it, and they really pressured it, and good for them for for keeping it going. So, Absolutely. And uh, as you say, uh, well, we're getting ready now. The teams are lining up for yeah. the MVP. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, definitely this Quebec team, I... Honestly, I don't know if anybody's going to beat them uh, in it's the tough. Men's Elite. It's tough. I mean, if... if if any other teams can play like uh, the fans did today, I mean, they might have a chance. So. And uh, looks like 
looks like Rob Christie has won the MVP for uh, for the Kilsyth Phantoms. And it's uh, like that was number seven. Number seven. <laughs> yeah. Jean-Philippe Noel. Yeah, uh, James Rice goes number seven. I, I think he's got to go uh, numero set. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, that's the end of day two of the Canadian Senior Broomball Championships from Owen Sound. And uh, it's been a great two days so far, and uh, a lot of great action still to come tomorrow. Uh, get some round robin, round robin games to, to finish out the round, ro round robin portion, and then all the playoffs happen tomorrow the quarterfinals, the semifinals. Yep. And uh, then on Saturday, we got the championships medal. All round, the championship yeah. games on the Saturday. So, uh, yeah, it's just been a great tournament so far. And, and as I said earlier, before we started today, that um, so many people have, have said, and you see it online and everything about the great time that they're having. So, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, I'm Rob Leonard and Billy Nickel. Thank you very much, Billy. Uh, hopefully, get to work with you some more over the next uh, couple of days. Oh, I'll be around. Don't all right, worry. fantastic. <laughs> All right, and on behalf of Mark Perry and all the crew with Rogers TV, we hope you enjoyed uh, what we brought you today. Make sure you tune in tomorrow uh, for more action. We've got a whole day full of action for you tomorrow. So uh, anyway, good night, everyone, and thank you. with